Namaste everyone and welcome to another week. So let's ask for blessings to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, Holy Masters, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally to my teacher, Master Tokok Sui Mahagu Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, here we are for another week of Anchor to Light Meditation. And um, so, just a short lesson that I think that a lot of us will appreciate. And one of the, I think it's a proverb of some sort, Chinese proverb. Somebody smart said it. A kite only rises with an opposing wind. Okay? Sounds Chinese to me. Anyway, <laughs> so, you know, it's funny that when you hear these things, they say, oh, ancient Confucian uh, proverb or whatever. I mean, who knows? The important part is it's useful, okay? Because otherwise, you know, we're going to have people say, no, they didn't say that or they didn't say that. And, and oftentimes you hear quotes of the Lord Buddha, right? The Buddha said this and somebody said, no, that's fake. Hard to say. You have to realize that 2,500 years ago, I mean, if you can lose emails and you can lose uh, stuff that you wrote, could you imagine 2,500 2500 years ago being transmitted all the way here? So you have to look at the essence of what's being taught, um, if it's applicable to you. As long as you can benefit from it, who cares? All right. So anyway, a kite only rises, or the kite rises only to an opposing wind. you got to say it with an accent. (laughs) The bottom line is... So, if you have a kite, imagine this kite, right? You guys know this already, but just in case, you know, you're so stuck on your computer, you never went out and see the sky. <laughs> so, you have, a, you have a kite, you you know, a lot of people, they run, they run. Why are you running? You're running so that wind will hit it, so it'll go up. No wind, it drops. So, what is the lesson there? It's something like this. As we go through life, whether you like it or not, And this is not being negative, it's just reality. You're going to have energy that is obstructing your path, right? And again, you're going to hear this quadrillion, whatever times, over and over again. It has to do with your attitude towards it, right? You heard the saying, turn a lemon into a lemonade. (laughs) So in other words, as a metaphor, that opposing wind could be something that is not in your plan. Right? Things are not going as planned, for example. And you seem to have people who don't like you or opposing your plans. The key is to realize, ah, how do I use this to actually make me better? It's all about attitude, right? You always hear me quote that, I'm sorry, I don't remember the smart dude, who said, if there's a rock in front of you, whether it's a stepping stone or a stumbling block, depends on how high you raise your foot. And we need to be reminded about this because oftentimes, you know, you're trying to do something and you see or you encounter an obstacle or a challenge. A lot of people say, oh, what else could go wrong? Oh, well, that's that. You're dead. <laughs> if that's your attitude, that's it. You're dead. <laughs> I'm not really dead, but you get the idea. So as there's an obstacle, you look at it, ah, how do I use this obstacle to step on it and go higher? Or another way to look at it is, if I want to rise, I want to be me. I'd be. I want to be more successful. If there's an obstacle, how do I use this obstacle to actually propel me to 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 something higher, something better? Make sense? And oftentimes, and listen, listen carefully. This has happened to me many, many times. Um, what is actually supposed to be an obstacle is actually a blessing in disguise. Right? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And uh, many times it, it has been what you call a guided mistake. Right? Like, just to give you an idea, many years ago, you know, when we go to classes, we would oftentimes hire or lease or rent uh, a small truck to haul all the books, the CDs, the sound system, and everything. That's what we used to do to bring it to the venue. Okay, and one time, you know, we're very close to having the event, like the next morning, the night before, or the afternoon before, we called the company, okay, we're going to go pick up the truck, 
They said, sorry, you know, we don't have a truck, blah, 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 whatever stupid excuse. So we're sitting, oh, man, what are, how are you going to hold this stuff over, right? You're a truck full. And so I asked my assistant, okay, call around. And I think uh, somebody said, hey, instead of renting a truck, why don't you rent one of those moving trucks? You know, here in the United States, you call it U-Haul or whatever, right? I said, why don't you call those? You know, we're not moving a whole house, but maybe they have a truck. And the person called, and guess what? We got three times the size, the volume of a truck, at something like half the price. Because it's meant to move homes, right? And so it's huge. And you don't have to kind of squeeze everything in at half the price. You know, me Chinese, me like bargain. I said, take it. And I look back, I go, I know it sounds trivial for some of you, but I meditated on this. And I go, here we are, stressing out. Oh, man, it's not, it didn't go as planned. You know, we want that truck to be able to bring stuff over, that mini, mini truck. And yet, God in the higher being says, you dumbass. <laughs> Here's something bigger for you at half the price. What's wrong with you? Get the idea? So instead of going crazy about it, I go, wait, wait, wait. How do I use this to my, to my advantage? We don't have the truck. Let's look for something else. So you look at the big pictures. If not for that little setback, we would not have something better. Get the idea? All of it has to do with your attitude. Some people, you know, they're proverbial, half glass, eh? half, half full glass, half empty glass. It's all about attitude. And it goes to the virtue that's taught by my teacher. Constancy of aim and effort and non-laziness. If your target and your objective is worthwhile and you really believe in it, and you want it, you don't let anything get in your way. You have obstacles, you turn the obstacle through a propellant to be booster rockets. And I know easier said than done, you know, I've been through it many times, but looking back, that's one of the lessons in life. You look at people who succeed, it's not because they haven't failed. It's just that they got up when they failed. And when they got up, they go, okay, how do I use that? So either I don't fall anymore or so I can jump higher. You use your obstacles as springboards. It's all here. That's why when we have people uh, in meetings about, you know, instructors, you know, teach panicking, so on and so on, you can always tell. <clears throat> the ones who are not doing well, are the ones who always find reasons why things won't work. The ones who are successful acknowledge there's certain things don't work and they say, hey, let's try another approach. Or why, why don't we use that to our advantage? And I remember being in um, Tony Robbins' events and he says, okay, this is your target. If this approach doesn't work, what do you do? Change your approach. What if that doesn't work? Change your approach. What if that doesn't work? Change your approach. It's like he said it's like, I don't know, he enumerated like five, six, seven times until the audience got it. If it doesn't work, change your approach. <laughs> what if it takes a thousand times? Change your approach until you hit the target. Constancy of aim and effort. Aim and effort. And non-laziness. The problem is we give up. If it's worthwhile goal, <laughs> move your ass. Just keep going. <laughs> I know it's easier than said than done. And again, it's not that I'm not being sensitive with some of you, but that goes with everything in life. People who succeed are not the ones who are extra super talented, extra smart, great opportunities in general, is basically who is willing to go further than anybody else, who's able to use obstacles as something to push them rather than to stop them. So the kite can only go higher as it harnesses the wind that's supposed to be opposing it to make it go higher. I look back in my life, um, yeah, I've <laughs> countless screw ups. I can't even, I, I used to tell people in class, they go, look, you know, you might think I'm special and I'm this and that, but actually before I met my teacher, 
I already had the Midas, Midas touch. You know, Midas, everything touched the gold, uh, touches turned to gold. But the Midas touch I have is the reverse. <laughs> it's like I'm in the Twilight Zone. Everything I touch failed. Until I met my teacher who kind of kind of slapped me around and said, hey, 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 there's something wrong. Change this approach, change that approach. But it's already innate in me to be a raging rhinoceros to keep going. The only problem is at that time, before I met the teacher, I kept charging to the wrong thing. <laughs> but that nature of charging forward is already there. And all the teacher had to do is pick me up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go. <laughs> you get the point? And I look back, it's not because I didn't make mistakes. I had a ton of them. But for me, they were just, eh, course corrections. That's all. Course corrections. I screwed up, hit a wall, eh. Pick another wall to break. Oh, that didn't work? Pick another wall. And at some point, I noticed, hey, there are no more walls. Because for me, the walls are just what? Springboards. If I see a wall, I can get up on top of that wall and go higher. Make sense? So... Most of it has to do with what? How badly do you want your objective? How badly do you want to succeed? How badly do you want your finances to improve? How badly do you want to have your income increase? How badly do you want to improve that relationship? How badly, in other words, how hungry are you for that objective? And I can tell you right now, most people give up because as Tony Robbins says, your why is not big enough. How big is your why? If your why, you want it, it's not big enough, you're not hungry enough, every little thing is a reason for you to quit. I'll tell you that right now. Even meditation, spiritual practice. If you're not really serious, you go, I really want to attain this level of inner peace, this level of enlightenment. If you're not really serious about that, guess what? Well, you know, my back's a little sore today. I'm not going to meditate. Well, you know, uh, my internet's a little slow, so maybe I won't. Well, the internet's not working, so I'm not going to meditate. <laughs> Get the idea? People who are not dedicated to succeed will always find reasons to quit. Simple as that. I know that sounds harsh, but it is what it is. Get over it. If you want to be su successful in anything, the eye is on the target. Whatever your goal is, that's why you don't... So I just, I'm just saying that so you don't, guys don't think it's all about money, success. It could be anything. You want to lose weight. Okay, let's start there. Body wants to lose weight. Well, guess what? If that is your target, it requires discipline. Discipline means when you have temptation, you know, you want to stuff your face with that gallon of ice cream... <laughs> Instead of eating the whole thing, you eat half. <laughs> you get the point? So, one of the things that my teacher taught me many years ago is this. He says, constancy, aim, and effort. This is an aspect of the soul, the will aspect of the soul, connected to the will aspect of the soul. And the will aspect of the soul is a combination of power and purpose. Power and purpose is something like this. Power without purpose is wasted. It's just like getting into a car, your car is full of gas or an electric car fully charged, <clears throat> nowhere to go. Okay? Purpose with no power is useless. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. You can't even get out of bed. Or you're in the car. I map out where I'm going, this is what I'm going, GPS, everything set up. <laughs> I got my snacks, I got this and that. Uh, no gasoline or no electricity, no propellant. Useless. So will is a combination of what? Power and purpose. So if you want to succeed in anything, you have to have the power for it. And of course, you have to have the goal first. The two together, nothing can stop you. I hope that helps. I know, you know, oftentimes people used to think spirituality is like, yeah, man, everything's cool, everything's connected to the universe. Oh, I just go with the flow and whatever happens, it's like you're smoking weed all day long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I oftentimes hear people say, just go with the flow. 
in the right context, yes. But if that's what you do with your life, just imagine. It's a dead fish that flows <laughs> with the water. Dead fish go with the current. You realize that, right? <laughs> so if that's your main slogan in, in life, I wish you luck. I hope you have lots of good karma and you have a lot of people who will save you, <laughs> pull you out of the water. Because going to flow only eh, doesn't work. You go with the flow when it's appropriate. But in general, have a goal, have a target in everything in your life and stick with it. And if your approach doesn't work, again, to go to Tony Robbins, change your approach. Keep changing your approach. Change your approach. Make sense? Changing approaches, changing your approach, changing your approach to keep focusing the target is where it requires both power and purpose. Because the purpose keeps you there. That's your why. Make sense? The power is to keep, make sure that you have enough fuel to keep going when everybody else has quit. As I always, as I always say, you want to be more successful than your competition? Outlive and outperform them. Outlive and outperform them. How big is your war chest, as they say in business, right? Can you sustain it? That's how you succeed. Yeah, but I don't like competition. I don't like stress. Uh, wake up call, buddy. That's life. It's a life. If you can't handle it, go live in the mountains, be in a monastery, live there. Otherwise, it's life. Anything you want to do in life requires you to overcome hindrances, obstacles. But if your attitude changes that any of these things that are not going your way, at least according to your plan, eh, this is just an opposing wind so I can go higher like a kite. Uh, this is just uh, these are just rocks that I can step on so I can go higher. If your attitude is like that, guess what? You're gonna outperform and out outlive your competition. Now, let's finish it off by something like this. That by talking about this, when all is said and done, the tendencies of your body, your emotions, and your thoughts. These are your real competitors. You realize that? Your real competitors are within, not outside. Yep. If you have trained horses, we're back to the horses again, right? You're a charioteer. If you've trained your horse, your physical horse, your emotional horse, your mental horse, then it doesn't require much course correction. Every time they, they see an obstacle, they know how to get over it, get around it blast through it but if your horses are not trained they're <laughs> they're used to giving up then it's not gonna work so mastery of the self is important in order to master your environment and your life so we go back to the original teaching remember who you are you are a spiritual being of divine intelligence you can think things through you are a speech of being of divine love. You have the will to serve, to help people. And you are a speech of being of divine power to keep charging forward no matter what happens because your goal is worthwhile. Let's meditate. To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you for your blessings. To my teacher, Master Sokoksui, Mahagu Jumailin, all the higher beings, thank you for divine light, love, guidance, help, healing, and protection. Thank you for blessing us with a loving heart, an intelligent mind, and a powerful will that we may serve others. We thank you in full faith. So be it. Okay, let's do the meditation twin hearts to kind of soften the energy. I didn't mean to come off uh, <laughs> this morning like, <laughs> like that. So let's just kind of balance the will with some lovey-dovey energy, okay? Heart chakra. I'm capable of that sometimes. All right, shall we? Tap your heart with your left hand. Tap your crown with your right hand. Open your palm like this. Imagine the earth in front of you. Be aware of your heart. Just say our hearts are one. Be aware of your crown. Our souls are one. Our spirits are one. 
So be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Bless every person, every being on earth with peace and with love, starting with the people around you, your family, your friends, your acquaintances, people you work with. Let that loving energy just keep, exp keep expanding all over the world. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Let's recall the people we know who are going through ch difficult times, challenging times. Be it with their health, with their finances, their relationships, even their mental health. Just visualize their lives turning around and getting better and better. Bless them with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. Sadness, let me sow joy. Be aware of your heart. Bless every person, every being with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with a new hope and faith, with light and with joy. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale and imagine golden light flowing out of your hands to your loved ones, your relatives, people you, people you work with, and let that golden light just spread throughout the entire earth. And just say, our souls are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed. So be it. So be it. May all be blessed with peace, love, and kindness. So be it. Just be still. Now be aware of your heart and crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Imagine golden light pouring out of your hands, even brighter than before. Filling the entire earth. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings in every dimension, every direction above and below be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and the willingness to do good. May all be blessed, so be it. So be it, and so it is. Now just keep your tongue on your palate, just on the roof of your mouth. Keep your hands where they are. Just be still and let the blessings to keep flowing through us, simultaneously purifying our thoughts, our emotions, our energy bodies. As that energy blesses every person, every being on earth now, so be it. <coughs> Be still. Now, lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Above your crown, imagine a beautiful golden flame just floating up there. The image doesn't have to be clear. Just know it's there. Be gently of the way, be aware of the love within your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to the crown. Up, up into that beautiful golden flame. Ah. 
Be still. You're not the body. You're the soul. You're the spiritual self. You're not any of your emotions. You're the soul, the spiritual self. You're not any of your thoughts. You're the soul. You're the spiritual self. A being of pure energy and light. Be still and just allow your awareness and consciousness to just drift deeper and deeper into that golden flame. Within that beautiful golden flame is literally an ocean of golden light. As a being of light, you merge with that ocean of golden light. Be still. Om. Om. Allow your awareness to just drift deeper and deeper to that beautiful ocean of golden light. stillness and just simply let go and just let things be any sound any noise you hear just allow you to drift deeper and deeper in that beautiful ocean of golden light now Gently, slowly, very gently and slowly move your fingers, move your toes, slowly and gently slide back to your body, your physical body. Now raise your hands in blessing to release the excess energy. First imagine the people you love in front of you. Fill them with beautiful golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity and spiritual connection, spirituality. So be it. Let that golden light spread to your family, your friends, the people you work with. May all be blessed with good health, happiness, prosperity, and spirituality. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your feet the base of your spine and your hands fill the earth below you with golden light 
Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it, and so it is. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tokok Sri Mahagujime, thank you. In full faith. And so it is. Okay, open your eyes. I hope you like the meditation. We add some extra secret sauce there. So even though it was short, it was only like seven, no, it's less than ten minutes. But with the secret sauce, you go higher. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> I hope you got something out of today's lesson. It's short. And uh, the key there is really just keep pushing forward. And it's interesting, during meditation, if you think uh, if you think of certain people, whether you like them like them or not, okay, whether you agree with them or not or not, you have people like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. If they just went with the flow, and not disrupt the flow, and go the other direction, what would society be? Right? Even Einstein. He literally <laughs> changed Newtonian physics. I don't know if you know that. That's why at that time we came up with it. People think it was nuts. How is it possible that uh, light can bend around massive objects? He turned gravity upside down. <laughs> Pun intended. If you just went with the flow, oh, Newton's been around for, what, 100 years before and everybody believes this, we would not have the technology we have today. Make sense? So, I meditate on these great people. Again, what are you like if you're not? It's not the point. The point is, if you think about it, change is what creates progress. In fact, this part I know you're not going to like. Because everybody says, I want everything balanced. If there's balance, there's no movement. You realize that? Imbalance is the key to progress. When you're so balanced, nothing moves. I know, it's a very different way of thinking about it. But the imbalance is using inertia to your advantage. You know this, right? Going back to Newton. Whatever is not in motion will stay not in motion until you have a, a force that moves it. So if you're so balanced, there's no movement, you're just cruising. Oh, well, If you're in retirement age and your finances are good, great. But if you want to accomplish something better, something great, you want to improve something, believe it or not, you have to get yourself into imbalance. Get off your ass and move forward. Okay? Just a little advice there. All right, anyway, just a few announcements, just quickly. Uh, this Saturday, no, this Friday night, uh, is that Friday? No, Saturday, sorry. Saturday, you see me out here, don't go crazy. <laughs> I'm teaching this class, Achieve uh, Spiritual Essence, the Chakras and the Tree of Life for Asia and Australia. Because, you know, some of you complain, yeah, it's not fair. I'm not in the U.S. How come I can take the class? Again, I'm licensed under the mother organization established by my teacher, the Institute for Inner Studies. So that's going to be this Saturday, uh, Asia, Australia region. So I'm going to be here from like 5 p.m. in the afternoon all the way to like 2, 3 a.m. Sunday morning, California time, which is just the right time for them over there. So if you're... From that area, well, uh, we'll give you links later where you can contact them and you can take the class. It's going to be online, all right? So just let you know. Uh, the other one is feng shui. A lot of people ask about feng shui. Where, whether you're here or other parts of the world, we're having um, it's a workshop, a mini workshop, get acquainted workshop on feng shui and self-healing. Just go to masterco.org and uh, that's what it is. If you're on Instagram, just go there. It's called Aligning Your Inner and Outer World where... I talk about feng shui and give you certain tips to arrange your environment. 
you know, energetically. And Chandan Paramswara talks about self-healing. And you have some techniques you can use right away. And if you want to take the full class, you're welcome to. All right? Regardless, we will see you tonight, or at least California time, uh, 7 hours and 20 minutes. Okay? And as far as uh, Europe, UK, for UK, somebody was asking about UK. I taught the Pranic Feng Shui class a few months ago. But I'll be teaching this class for UK in uh, November. All right? Anyway, it's interesting how the world is right now. We get to touch more people, not going anywhere physically. It's interesting that's how great teachers touch millions of lives, just with their consciousness. Think about it. Namaste, everyone. You all take care, and we will see you in a few hours.